There were the um, morning sittings, so what I'd like to do is um, uh, offer some meditation guidance during the first uh, uh, half hour or so, and then um, I'll ring the bell a single time, and then those who'd like to carry on sitting can carry on sitting. Those who'd like to go out and do walking meditation uh, can do so, then I'll gather back here um, at uh, 6.45 um, and then close the the uh, the morning session at that point, so that a bell will be rung outside to bring everyone in. But uh, I would encourage people if uh, if you're going to sit, sit. If you're going to walk, walk. <laughs> and don't think ten minutes after the second part of the sitting has begun. Uh, actually, I think I'll go out and walk. <laughs> so there isn't the constant shuffling and coming and going. Um, that uh, there's just that uh, one. Um, one time, when if you want to leave, then you can get up and leave, otherwise to carry on uh, sitting. So that's the pattern that I'd like for these morning sessions. And closing the eyes, settling into the morning meditation. Again, take a moment to note, how do we feel now? This morning, how is the mood? Alert, sleepy, depressed, cheerful. How is it? How's the body this time of the day? This temperature? Feel light, heavy. Comfortable, uncomfortable. How is it? So we develop the habit of taking a look, exploring. Simple, mindful attention to uh, how the body is being held. What the mood is like. What's the attitude the mind is holding towards this moment. And settling into the meditation posture. Consciously directing the, the attention inward. <coughs> Inviting the body to relax to settle and feeling the presence of the spine inviting, encouraging the body to be sitting in an upright way the spine naturally stretching, growing to its full, comfortable extension. Not rigid and tense, but comfortably alert, energized.
and bringing the attention to settle upon the breathing. Feeling the rhythm of the breath. It's coming and going according to its own pace. As we set the uh, the intention to bring the mind to this present reality, to focus upon the the body, the rhythm of the breath, this present moment. It's also important, uh, along with that to clearly and consciously set the intention to learn from whatever occurs during the day, during this whole retreat. However things happen to go, whatever is the flow of perceptions and experiences, if we set the intention to learn from whatever arises, from whatever is experienced, then nothing can go wrong. Whether the mind concentrates easily, the body comfortable, chattering thoughts dissolving away, the mind clear, awake, focused. If things go in that direction, then we learn from that experience of things going well or as according to our wishes. But if they go in the in another direction, the mind filled with chattering thoughts, the body uncomfortable, aching, restless, waves of agitated emotions, painful memories, one after another after another, then we learn from that. That's what we learn from. Whether it's liked or disliked, wanted or unwanted, expected or unexpected, everything will teach us if we let it. If we're wise, the painful and unliked, difficult experiences will teach us just as much, if not more, than the wished-for and likable, beautiful experiences. Therefore, it's always wise, helpful, to set that intention. The beginning of a day to, re uh, to recollect, to consider. Whatever arises during today, whether it's coming from inside my mind, or some aspect of my body, or the situation around me, that my first, first intention be to, to learn from that. Whether it's a discomfort in the body, or a disruption in the schedule, a difficult roommate. Struggling with the, uh, the weather, or with the knee pain. To pick that up, to meet that with the attitude of, oh, What's this teaching me? What can I learn from this? Rather than following the habitual patterns of 
It shouldn't be this way. Why does it have to be like this? Why is it always me? This isn't fair. How can I get away from this? These are natural, ordinary, instinctive reactions. They're natural enough, but they don't liberate. Similarly, when things go well, the mind clear and bright, the body comfortable, at ease, the heart filled with friendliness and compassion for all beings, rather than just taking that for granted and getting drunk on it, to consider, oh, this is, this is the wished for, this is the delightful. This is the experience of things going well, quote unquote. What does this teach me? What do I learn from this? Then, everything benefits us the beautiful, the difficult, and the neutral, you know, that which is the, uh, the large area in the middle, neither particularly painful or particularly challenging. Everything teaches us. As the uh, the day unfolds, the periods of walking meditation, sitting meditation, again, I'd like to encourage a conscious effort to work with the mind with a, an attitude of friendliness collaboration. When there is the experience of the mind being busy, the sense of struggling and meeting a, a, an avalanche of random thoughts, squads of undisciplined emotions, to not make the, the mind, not to make our thoughts, our feelings, our body, to not make it an enemy or something that we are fighting against, but rather to be working with, to have an attitude of collaboration. <laughs> So in the moment when we're endeavoring to focus our attention on the breath or our footsteps as we walk along, the mind is straying this way and that, to patiently, steadily, each time, every single time that we notice the attention has wandered, with gentleness, care, patience, firmness. We let go and bring the attention back to the present. If thoughts of self-criticism or frustration arise, then those too we can meet with friendliness. Oh, this is the uh, 
This is the self-critical feeling. This is the, I'm hopeless at this and I'm never going to get it right feeling. This is the, my mind is a total mess. I'm a failed meditator feeling. We don't have to believe those thoughts or judgments. They arise, but they too are just perceptions, stories that the mind tells. They're not something that has to be believed in. Those judgments of, I'm useless, this is hopeless. Is my mind ever going to be peaceful? We don't have to believe those judgments. They're just random pictures, patterns of perception that arise. They come, they go, they change. It's like the sound of a passing aeroplane. It swings into our field of perception, does its thing, and then fades away. So we can receive the sound of a plane with an open heart and an attitude of kindness. We can receive the self-critical judgments. I'm hopeless, I'm never going to get free of this. My mind is a mess. It's like hearing the sound of a plane. We hear the sound, it arises, takes its shape, dissolves. The sound of the the nuns' community chanting in the next hall. Patterns, perceptions arise in consciousness, take their shape, dissolve. We don't have to create an opinion about it. We don't have to react against it. We don't have to grasp hold of it. We receive them, know them with an open heart, and let them go. Just like the body breathes in oxygen, absorbs it into the blood and breathes out carbon dioxide, so we breathe in the fabric, the content of each moment. Breathe it in, know it, let it go. And that knowing, that clear conscious awareness, that vicha, just like oxygen is the life source for the body, that awareness, that knowing is the life source for the heart. As the Buddha said, mindfulness is the path to the deathless, heedlessness is the path to death. The mindful never die. The heedless are as if dead already. So that mindful awareness, heedfulness, apamada, when that is present, when there is vijja, we're truly alive. That's like oxygen is the, the life-supporting source for the body. Vicha, awakened awareness, that's the life source for the heart. We're truly alive. So through today, we make the effort to cultivate these attitudes, working with friendliness, collaborative, open-hearted attitude towards the body, towards the mind, our personality, our situation. setting the intention to learn from everything. Moment after moment, bringing the mind to the, the feeling of the breath, the rhythm of the feet, 
and the everyday actions of walking between buildings, eating our breakfast, or filling our, uh, our work task, coming and going, sitting, standing, walking, lying down. Let's bring the attention to each moment. Notice the mood that's present. Feeling the, the sensations, the textures, the quality of the body. Noticing the moods as they come and go. So we keep it very simple, keep our effort and our intentions very simple and direct in this way, making a particular, paying particular attention, making a particular effort to notice feeling, the feeling of liking, the feeling of disliking. <laughs> to be mindful, open-hearted and fully aware of the simple feelings, the sensations in the body or the moods of the mind, and to notice when I like transforms into I want, or I don't like to I don't want, I can't stand, can't bear it. Through developing mindfulness of feeling, bring attention to that. See uh, the times when we climb on the train. And also when uh, we see that taking hold, that climbing on the train experience, grabbing hold of what we like, grabbing hold of what we, we dislike. When that's seen, when that's known, to make the effort to, to get off get off the train. Feeling that surge of wanting, hating. Feeling that surge, knowing it. To make the choice, to let go. To relinquish that craving, that wanting, that hating. And in that relinquishment, notice how it feels getting back onto the platform again when that craving is let go of. How does it feel? In this way, we begin to, to be clearly aware of the heart as it moves towards entanglement, clinging, becoming. We become alert to the tension, stress, the uh, dissonant, burdened quality that that has when there is a state of craving, clinging begin to know the, the tension, the painfulness of that. And then when there has been a letting go, when the, the mind drops that particular object, has relinquished, released, let go of that craving, that hatred, when we're back on the platform, notice how that feels. Quality of peacefulness, brightness, purity, simplicity that's here when the heart is free of that clinging. Notice that distinction and let that speak for itself. Let that be the, the source of, of our motivation. You see and know directly 
the heart free from clinging, from craving, is like this. Beautiful, bright, still, peaceful. And the heart entangled, caught up. And there's no choice to make. Our common sense, our natural wisdom, then inclines towards peacefulness, towards clarity, towards non-entanglement. Completely, naturally, easily, the heart moves, inclines towards, towards peacefulness. <laughs> 